Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Tuesday, April 28th. I'm Wayne Pratt. Missouri businesses can reopen this coming Monday if they follow social distancing guidelines. Missouri Governor Mike Parson's plan to restart the economy during the pandemic calls on businesses to minimize travel, allow employees to work remotely, and prohibit employees with symptoms from returning to work until they've been medically cleared. Local officials could override those guidelines with stricter regulations. St. Louis County's executive today will detail his plan to reopen county parks That follows an announcement by Sam Page yesterday of more appointees to an advisory group that will guide his administration on how to spend federal COVID-19 relief money. SSM Health is announcing furloughs for 2,000 workers. The St. Louis-based healthcare system says the bottom line is being hit by a 50% drop in patient volume during the pandemic. The Illinois Workers' Compensation Commission is repealing an emergency rule that would have granted benefits to essential workers who contracted COVID-19. Two business groups had filed suit claiming it was an overreach of authority by the commission by assuming those who tested positive contracted the disease while working. Here are the numbers. Missouri is reporting more than 7,100 positive COVID-19 results out of roughly 73,000 tests. There have been more than 280 deaths. In Illinois, state health officials report almost 46,000 positive results out of approximately 227,000 tests. Around 2,000 people have died. In just a few minutes, we will explore the vital link school nurses have in keeping children healthy, especially in rural areas, with schools closed during the pandemic. As we mentioned, all businesses in Missouri will be allowed to reopen next week. It's part of Governor Mike Parson's first phase of restarting the state's economy, which has been shut down during the pandemic. St. Louis Public Radio's Jacqueline Driscoll reports. This includes gyms, hair salons, houses of worship, hospitals can resume all surgeries. Every business will be able to open their doors. However, Parson says there will be social distancing guidelines, some occupancy limits, and possibly protective equipment requirements. Rob Dixon is the director of economic development. He says this isn't a return to normal. It's the beginning of a new normal. As the governor has mentioned, reopening our economy is not like flipping a switch on and off. It's going to be a gradual process that plays out in different different ways in different communities across our state. Local officials can enforce stricter policies. This order will be in place until the end of the month. In Jefferson City, I'm Jacqueline Driscoll, St. Louis Public Radio. Increased testing is key to business reopening plans throughout the country. Eight locations in Missouri are offering coronavirus tests this week as part of a program to better understand the spread of the disease. The drive through triage center at Phelps Health Medical Center in Rolla is one of those spots. Phelps Mary's County Health Department Director Ashley Wan says the information will be valuable to keep people safe as governments consider easing stay-at-home restrictions. I have an idea if I do have asymptomatic transmission going on in the community that I don't know about, or if I do have a few little hot spots of very mild cases, that we can we can see those, we can reach out, we can isolate those um, and knock them down. Phelps conducted 400 tests over the past two days. The highest number of COVID-19 cases and related deaths in Illinois is in the Chicago area, the most populous region of the state. Governor J.B. Pritzker says those numbers do not tell the whole story. Mary Hansen reports. Critics of the governor say the stay-at-home order shouldn't be applied in some downstate towns and cities because there are fewer cases there. But Pritzker says the focus should be on infection rates, how many people are getting sick compared to how many live in a county. It would be doing a massive disservice to our downstate residents if we governed only by raw numbers. Jasper County near Effingham and Monroe County in the Metro East have two of the highest death rates from the disease statewide. Pritzker says he is opening up state parks and allowing more elective medical procedures in places where the disease is less prevalent. I'm Mary Hansen. 
St. Louis's top three elected officials have voted to put more money towards affordable housing in next year's budget, mainly because of the outbreak. The original spending plan called for funding the Affordable Housing Trust Fund at its legal minimum of $5 million. The Board of Estimate and Apportionment has boosted that to $6 million by reducing the city's yearly contribution to its reserves. Mayor Lida Cruzen says she knows that building a rainy day fund is important. But we know how much we um, we need to have additional money into the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Officials expect more people to need assistance staying in their homes as the pandemic grinds on. The city is dealing with a gap of at least $40 million in its budget for fiscal year 2021. Aldermen will start their work on the spending plan next month. Students across the country are missing out on more than just face-to-face time with teachers during the pandemic. Those in rural areas might be missing an important link in their access to health care, school nurses. As Lee Gaines reports for Harvest Public Media, some nurses fear they will not be able to spot the warning signs of illness or abuse. Lisa Marlowe is a school nurse in the Murfreesboro School District. The district serves mostly low-income students in a rural part of southern Illinois. When school's in session, she says having eyes on students, especially those with chronic conditions like type 1 diabetes and asthma, is crucial. The biggest reason why it's a huge part of our job is because people don't get to access health care anywhere else or won't or don't have the means to. I have high school students who don't have insurance. But that's not happening right now. Now, Marlowe's delivering meals to students in the district. At least that way, she can try to see her students. We're just volunteering now. That's kind of my job. (laughs) We're driving around town. We're going through the back alleys of Murfreesboro. While on the lunch route, Marlowe recently spotted a middle schooler she knows who has a hard time managing his diabetes. I said, hey, how are you doing? And he had this kind of cast to his skin. It was kind of grayish cast to his skin that I've seen before when he was not well controlled, when he was sick. Marlowe says he didn't want to talk to her, so she called his mom, and his mom told her he was fine. But Marlowe says she worries parents might miss something that she'd pick up on. That's something parent Rebecca Strait agrees with. These people are important and they're essential in my kids' lives. Strait adopted her children from the foster care system. Two of Strait's children have feeding tubes and tracheostomies because they suffer from severe lung disease. Normally, they have one-on-one nurses who attend school with them. Her third child, Jariah, who's 11, would see her school nurse every day. Jariah has a severe form of asthma. So, you know, like she will check her vitals, she'll listen to her heart and stuff like that, um, which is very important for a child with asthma. And so with us being home, she doesn't get that. Straits family lives in a rural part of central Illinois. She says she takes notes from all the nurses her children see at school and gives them to their multitude of doctors, none of whom they're seeing right now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Sanjay Bonsell values that kind of insight from school nurses. Dr. Bonsell treats children with diabetes at the Loyola University Medical Center near Chicago. The school nurses are more than just observers and data recorders. Often they are the lifeline to making sure that these children are are not severely sick. Now that school nurses aren't seeing kids on a daily basis, Dr. Bonsell says he worries the most about children without good parental supervision. Strait worries about that, too. Before she adopted Jariah, a school nurse alerted authorities she was being neglected. Later, Jariah almost died after she suffered an asthma attack. She came home from school. There was no parents at home, and she had an asthma attack. And she was found by a friend that came over to her house. Jariah was in a coma for two months and in a hospital for four months. And so, yes, that nurse is very important to these kids. So I worry about that population myself. Strait says her daughter, Jariah, is fearful that something like that will happen to her again. But she trusts her school nurse and relies on her for a sense of comfort and safety. School nurses are often the first people to spot warning signs of illness and abuse. But that's a challenge when schools are closed. 
I'm Lee Gaines, Harvest Public Media. Harvest Public Media reports on agriculture and rural issues through a collaborative network of reporters and stations throughout the Midwest. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.